five minutes here at 11. Garage Pandemic Edition. Uh, sadly, we've had a reoccurrence here in California. Uh, the crackdown has reemerged and was sort of locked out of having our crew once again. So we are doing these uh, the old fashioned way. So I hope you uh, don't mind that. Um, but we try to have new content for you every single week, uh, regardless of what's going on in the rest of the world. It keeps us a little bit sane. And we have an insane car here today, actually. This is a 1975 Lancia Stratos HF, which stands for high fidelity, which uh, I don't quite get what that is, but uh, that's what it is, high fidelity. It was the 70s. Um, this is not my car. Uh, this car used to belong to our old friend, John Campion. John was here, uh, oh, I guess a year or so ago, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, sadly, he passed away from leukemia. What a great guy. He was uh, that classic American dream story. Irish immigrant came here with 26 bucks in his pocket, started a couple of companies, worked with rock groups. Fascinating life and was taken from us way too soon. And he loved race cars. He loved Italian cars. And this was one of his cars. Um, this car now belongs to a company called Stratus Auctions. Uh, they're going to be auctioning off a car very similar to this in a couple of weeks, but we thought it'd be fun when John was here, we didn't have a chance to bring this car. We brought some of his other cars here. You can go back and, and look at his, uh, his uh, interview with us on YouTube and see some of his cars. You'll see how passionate he was about these. I think if you just Google uh, uh, Lancia's, Lancia's Leno YouTube, it'll probably show up there. Okay, let's get into what we have here. This is the world's first purpose-built rally car. You know, it's interesting. Lancia used to work primarily with Pina Farina. Uh, uh, Bertone wanted to get involved with them. And Bertone went to them and said, hey, I got an idea. I want to build a car. And they, they used, the, what is it, the Lancia Fulvia? Is that how you say it? You know, these Italian names, I sometimes trip over them. I apologize. This car comes to us from Stratus Auctions. Uh, started by a young man named uh, Lance Butler, who, you know, it's funny. Uh, 25 years ago, we started a scholarship for McPherson College in Kansas for young men and women that wanted to get into automotive, uh, well, anything automotive. It's the only college that gives a four-year degree in automobile restoration. They teach everything, paint and body work, electrical, business, everything. And uh, this young man, uh, I met him at Pebble Beach in 2014. He was a graduate of the school, uh, which made me feel really good. And he started this auction company, and now he's sort of dealing in these rare automobiles. So that's, uh, it's, uh, that's fun to see. So there's another American success story right there. This car was designed by Marcello Gandini. So Marcello, of course, uh, the Lamborghini Miura, the Countach. This is probably his most fertile period, all those cars sort of coming at a furious rate in a short amount of time. Uh, the flying wedge, they used to call this. Uh, you remember the uh, Lancia Zero that belonged to our friend Philip Sarafin. Probably the lowest car ever, <laughs> you know. I, I think the, the rumor goes that Bertone wanted to show Lancey what he had done, and he drove it to the factory and went under the gate that came down, and oh, they, all, they, they all cheered. Magnificent, you know, Italians are very passionate about their cars. Anyway, this was just pretty much the wildest Italian car I've seen in a long time. Uh, this uses the Ferrari Dino 2.6 liter V6 engine, about 190 horsepower. Weighs about 950 kilograms, which is, eh, well, this one is closer to 2,000 pounds, but still extremely light. Five-speed gearbox. This started out as a road car, and the first owner modified it for racing, won a bunch of races. Uh, these ran the, these won the Tour de France a number of times three or four times at Tago Flore, just all kinds of, the most successful rally car, I think, I don't know if in history, but pretty darn close. I'm not, I'm not a big rally guy. I don't have all the facts. Uh, I just love them as a road car. That, that's my favorite sort of car. This was something different. This was a race car uh, that was later modified for the road. You know, a lot of times, whether it's the McLaren F1 or whatever, it's a road car modified for racing. But this was built primarily as a race car 
uh, people just went nuts for it. They loved the look, they loved the feel, they loved the sound, and they did a road-going version of it. Uh, well, I mean, look at this headlight setup in the front. This is pretty wild. No one has ever seen anything like this. Uh, pretty amazing. Uh, let me open it up a little bit here for you. It's not as cramped as you might think. Vision out the front is fantastic. Vision out the back is almost non-existent because, well, everybody's behind you on this car. That's pretty much it. I mean, this just won everything incredibly fast. In fact, a lot of manufacturers just withdrew from rallying because they knew they had no chance against this automobile. It's, it's, it's a legendary car. I mean, this was the 70s, you know? God, it's 50 years ago. But you know, this car still looks current. It still looks up to date. I mean, uh, let me show you something in the door. Here's something I find fascinating. Uh, notice how the window works. This is kind of cool. You just loosen this, and then you, you drop the whole window down. And this area here is for your helmet. So you put your helmet right here, which is kind of cool. Yeah, this is such a simple solution, isn't it? I mean, it's lightweight, it's efficient, and gives you as much window as you need, I suppose. It is a five-speed, as I said earlier, uh, dog leg. Uh, this one has the road-going synchromesh transmission. I believe the works cars had kind of a dog box where it just sort of just just slam those gears. The gears are bigger, stronger, tougher to take uh, the horsepower. This is a two valve engine, not the four valve version. Uh, but with the synchronous, it makes it a little easier to drive. And it's geared, well, it's got rally gears in it, which means it's not a 150 mile an hour car. A top speed in this thing is probably, I don't know, 100 miles an hour or something like that. I don't know. I'm not speaking from experience there. But when I drive it in a few minutes, we'll see just how low geared it is. But it's a zero to 60 car. It's meant to just, well, it's a rally car. Just tear through dirt roads and whatever else is out there. Um, let's come around and take a look at the back of the vehicle. The back is uh, pretty impressive as well. This is the view most people see. You know, let me tell you, you can't beat round tear lights, whether it's the mid-60s Cortinas or the first-generation BMWs. You know, they, they, they went to the square. It was never the same. Everybody loves round tail lights for some reason. And uh, they make a statement. Uh, they get the job done. I'm going to try and open this up. I know he said it's a two-man job, but I'm learning about this car just as you are. So let's see. We've got to undo this. Let's do, undo that latch there. Undo another latch on the other side. I don't have my crew because of the COVID deal. Okay. Uh, okay, we've got pins here that hold it. We've got uh, pins here that hold it. And this opens as well. I have no idea what's in here. Okay, this is just a boot. It's got some headphones, okay. Nothing really in there, but actually a good sized trunk. For... All right, let me see what happens now. If I can. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure I can do this by myself. Let's see. That's loose. Okay, it wants to move. Hang on. I see why this is a two-man job. You gotta keep going back and forward. Oh, okay, here we go. All right, here we are. Okay, don't wanna break anything. Bridge. Okay, there we go. Notice the air box here. You know, interesting, nowadays, cause this would be 3D printed, but this is, looks like in interesting here how this was done. You know, when I was a kid, I worked at a car dealership, uh, Foreign Motors in Boston, and we used to deal in these kind of cars all the time. We used to get the Fiat Dino. The Fiat Dino was a Fiat with this Ferrari V6 engine in it. And since it didn't have the magical Ferrari name, they didn't go for much money, 3,500 bucks, five grand, and we'd, we'd get them at a wholesale price. And then, you know, my boss would sell them for five, 5,500, $6,000, something like that. But it's amazing now because of course they command a premium price now. 
he didn't want to give the engines to Lancia. There was some hesitation there. And then eventually he did. Uh, they built 492 of these cars for, homolog for homologation, rather. Uh, you needed 500, then they changed it to 400, but they wound up building 492. Uh, this is, as I said, a 1975 model. Um, so Ferrari eventually released the engines to, to be used by Lancia. And of course, Lancia, just a, a great company, um, built some legendary cars, the Lancia Aurelia, uh, just, uh, just amazing. I've, I've got one of the Aurelias, a B24, and it is the greatest car with a, a V6 engine. Lancia actually made the first V6 engine, but they did not make the engine for this. This was a uh, Ferrari motor, as I said, 190 horsepower, but eventually they came out with a four valve head and they got it up to 500 and something horsepower. So they were, these were fast, powerful cars and tr tricky at speed, extremely short wheelbase. Um, uh, yeah, so there you go, there you go. But there's your dual fuel pumps right there. Overflow is here, oil filler here battery uh, looks like a, a large motorcycle battery for a gull wing or maybe a big BMW tour or Harley tour tour a small for a car but again you're looking for the lightest weight possible this is a, well it's got electronic ignition I don't know if they had that back in 1975 four-wheel disc you got filler caps on each side and you got these outside see right here this little door to to fuel it up but uh, impressive looking thing uh, look at this frame, look at the upright shocks here, the way it's all put together. Just an exciting, you know, this car could exist in any era. Obviously the 70s was its highlight, but 80s, 90s, for the next 100 years, this will be just an amazing car. The look is outrageous now, it looks contemporary now. Imagine this in 1970, this was uh, when the wedge shape was sort of the whole deal, you know, uh, Gandini, what a genius he was, what a fantastic artist and designer to the Countach, the Miura, this, I mean, j just a very fertile period for him. He was quite a guy and he's still, I was gonna say a young man, he's, I think he's maybe two years older than I am, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's not, a young, not a young man, but uh, very cool. All right, let's open up the front too and show you what that looks like. Okay, I got the front open. I spared you me running back and forward like I did in the back. This is what it looks like. It's amazing how much like the Lamborghini Miura this is. You can see the Gandini influence here. The same sort of fans, the same sort of tilt to the radiator, the way the tire is mounted with the fuel pump, another fuel pump. Is there another fuel pump up here? No, there isn't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, because the gas tank in the Miura was up front. Um, but anyway, just it, it it reminds me of the mirror, put it that way. I guess it doesn't have that much in common with it, but enough to make me go, hey, that reminds me of the mirror. Okay, you got your air intakes here, a couple of blower, one blower motor here. I mean, compared to modern cars, it seems almost simplistic, but at the time, this was pretty complicated and revolution. I remember this was the first purpose-built rally car. It was built to be a rally car from day one. Not a road car, not a high-speed oval race car, uh, a rally car. So uh, that's what makes it interesting. I recognize those horns. That's the same horns the Mura had. Um, and of course, it's another kind of Gandini thing here, the wheel, the gold anodized wheel. Okay. I think we're just about ready to take this thing for a ride. I am anxious to drive this. Uh, we'll be experiencing this together because this is my first time in it. It's not like we drove it and then we came here and, and filmed it. I mean, you, we're doing this sort of in real time. The car was dropped off this morning. We walked around it. We shot these photos. I'm going to take it for a ride now and then uh, we'll put it on the truck and send it back. But uh, it's wonderful. It's thrilling to have the opportunity to do this. Uh, come on, let's go for a ride. I forgot to mention before we take it for a ride, let's put it up on our Stelconi lift here and show you what it looks like underneath. Okay, as you can see, this thing is no prom queen. It's uh, all skid plates under here. You know, this is what I love, a car you can actually use in the real world and, and beat the hell out of it and it can take it. You know, you're not gonna rip off a spoiler or anything on this. You've got incredible power, incredible speed, but you've also got plenty of uh, margin for 
or ground clearance or stuff like that. Here's the rear suspension on the left side. Here's the rear suspension and drive tra drive shaft on the right side. Everything looks massively overbuilt. Look at that frame, okay? Okay, it's amazing, as light as it is with a massive frame like this. These heavy skid plates under here. You can't really see a whole lot. Everything's protected because this thing is going over dirt and rocks and just at a uh, hundred miles an hour, just just being pounded to death, but you, you can't break it. Look at this, look at this massive, all sorts of bracing and everything in here and this skid plate, imagine those get replaced fairly regularly. There's your front suspension, pretty straightforward, nothing overly sophisticated here because this thing is built to take a beating. There's your radiator up front. There's a spare tire that we talked about before. What a fantastic car this is. This is what I love, something you can drive as hard as you possibly could. I mean, you could never break this car on the street. That's what's, well, you probably could, but you have to be an idiot, but look at this. All right, I think we're about ready to take it for a ride. You got various drain holes here. This is just a big sheet of aluminum. Nothing lightweight there. No carbon fiber on this thing because it wasn't even invented yet. All right, let's, uh, let's take her out and see how she goes. This is going to be exciting. The great thing about this is you never scrape anything. You know, usually going out my driveway, I got to keep I gotta like go sidewards and every other thing, but not with this thing. Oh, bellissimo! Fantastic car in this thing. sheet on it. Obviously it's like on or all of that. I love the fact that all the fuses right here. I love the fact that I've got all my uh, all my relays. You know, it's a real world car. If something breaks, you can fix it on the fly real quickly. That's what makes it kind of cool. But this is very drivable. I thought this would be some, you know, some race car Cammy thing you couldn't drive on the street, but it's fantastic. The only concession they made to the street is this synchro mesh gearbox. But other than that, it's pure, pure race car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love how twitchy it is. I love the short wheelbase. When you're just looking at a little over two and a half liters, which is not a big motor, but this thing is so lightweight. And this is before carbon fiber. I mean, you saw the undercarriage of this thing. You saw how massively strong it looked with the bracing and everything. Yeah, it's still very light. I wish I was driving at night with these rally lights. I'd love to see what it does to the road. Everybody gives you the thumbs up in this thing. An old guy next to me. Old guy, he's probably five years younger than I am. He just gave me the thumbs up. You know, I'm impressed with a lot of cars, but this one is very impressive. This reminds me a lot of the Ferrari F40, which was fun to drive. But you know, I think maybe this might even be more fun. I don't know why. Uh, it's just so purpose built. And I love the fact that uh, you don't go from, oh my God, I'm gonna the splitter hit the thing or the tire hit the, uh, you know, the, 
inside of the wheel well. I, I love the fact, and this gearbox is, it's a dog leg like a 901 Porsche. You pull over this way, reverse is straight ahead, first is down low. Seats are comfortable. Nice leather seats. They certainly didn't uh, scrimp there. Well, sure, you know, these guys would spend nine, ten hours or whatever it is in these things. With all these lights, I'm surprised that that alternator can keep up. It must be able to, I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 